All right, awesome. So we'll pretty well just, I'll show you how the calculator works. Um, once you're done with this as well, so the link to the Google spreadsheet, you can just uh, create a duplicate. So whenever it is you go through the link itself, just go to file and make yourself a copy. And that way you'll be able to edit it and actually use it for your own purposes. You won't be able to edit this one directly. Um, cool. So to get started, um, here's the little instruction sheet. So at the bottom, you've got all your different little tabs. Um, and the two that we're going to be mostly focused on today are the instructions and demo tabs just here. And then you, uh, once you actually come over here, or for anyone else listening, um, you'll be more interested in using the one week all up to 12 weeks. And if you have a need to as well, you can always add on additional tabs by just simply duplicating it and adding on additional weeks. Um, but let's go back to the instructions. So to begin, how to use this calculator uh, correctly, just throw in your full name to begin with, just in this A5 little sheet. And I'll show you why you did that a little bit later. So this sheet, as we say here in the instructions, is really intended for sort of supplementary evidence that gets attached along with your pay slips. So when you're applying for your second or your third visa um, to stay longer in the country, you typically have to give the immigration department your pay slips. And then based off of that, they'll largely say, OK, yes, this person has completed 88 calendar days of work if you're applying for a second year visa or yes, they've completed 179 calendar days if you're applying for your third visa. However, for some people, the work that they're doing um, can be variable in the amount of time that they actually work each day. So if you're working on a farm, for instance, and you start working for a couple of hours, but then a thunderstorm comes along and you have to stop work as a result, um, you may have only worked for two hours, but you can still claim that as a full day worked. Uh, so that's why this document comes in handy is it helps you to keep a track or a log of all the days that you've worked and then at the end of each week um, it'll tell you how many days that you're actually claiming for how many calendar days and you'll also get the employer to sign off at the bottom so that way if there's any discrepancy um, you know if you only work a couple hours for one day of the week for again some whatever reason then the government won't say, oh, well, this doesn't count as a day because the employer has said that, no, this did count as a day. So that's what this document should be really helpful for. Um, the thing to be probably aware of is when you're filling out this document is when you, you, you need to make sure that it matches up to your pay slips. So if you receive a weekly pay slip or monthly or whatever it is, just make sure that the dates and hours you put into this actually match up with the pay slips so that, again, if there's any discrepancies, then the government or the immigration department might have to flag that, contact you or contact the employer or, you know, chase it up. So if you just make sure those two things are aligned, then you shouldn't really have any issues. Cool. If you do have any other problems at the end of this or something that I didn't touch on, again, either just let me know in the comments or questions, or you can always send an email to me, um, just this email address down here. So feel free to get in touch if you need any time. All right, so we'll actually show you how it works now on this little demo slide. Okay, so here's obviously the calculator and how it works is this is a log for every single week. So as you'll notice down here, we've gone week one, week two, week three. So that's how this calculator is meant to be used. It's just following um, a week of work. Whenever your week of work starts, so typically a Monday or a Sunday, for most people, you can just keep the periods um, consistent. So if you start on Mondays, you want to start from Monday week, that's fine. Just let them know when the period starts and period ends for this week that you're interested in. And once you put those dates in there, you're just going to be able to select what days of the week you actually work. So on this first column here, you've got the days of the week and you've got a drop down selection. So here I've chosen Monday, but again, it's, you, know, you can choose any of the drop downs you like. To the right of that, I'm then going to input what time I actually started work. So on this Monday, I started at 10 a.m., but let's just say maybe that was wrong. I actually started at 9. Okay, so I started at 9 a.m. When did I finish on the Monday? 
same thing. I'm just going to put that time in. Let's just change it. Uh, maybe I actually finished earlier. And then it's going to calculate for me over here on this duration side how many hours I actually worked in the day. Once you've actually filled them out throughout the entire week, you'll have obviously your log, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The reason why we've actually got so many additional columns is if, for instance, you happen to have um, a sort of morning shift and an afternoon shift. So it keeps it easier to track your hours. So for instance, on a Sunday here, let's just say I work from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., okay, which is a total of four hours. I then have a break for an extended period of time on the Sunday, saying I actually go in, back, uh, go in a bit later, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Again, that is now for another six hours added. So that's why we've got so many additional rows um, for you there. What will actually happen as well is each unique day will get counted up, okay, for a total number of days worked through the week here. And because we're more interested about days worked rather than about the number of hours worked, um, if you do work five days during any given week, and your employer counts each of those days to be a day worked. Okay, so again, if you get rained off of a farm after a couple of hours, um, that should still be considered a day worked. If you're working at a bar and after you know two or three hours, there's just no one in the bar, so the owner decides to pack up, that still counts the day worked. So as long as you work five days in a given week, okay, you can actually claim seven days or seven, day calendar, seven calendar days. So typically that means you're claiming your Saturday and your Sunday. So again, obviously really important because it means that'll fast track you, fast track you to be completing the full 88 days or the 479 days if you're able to claim the extra couple of days from having five days worked a week. Hopefully that one's not too complicated. Again, your payslip will always be the thing that the immigration cares about most uh, first off. And you might not even need this document necessarily if you're achieving over 36 hours a week consistently. Um, most of the time, the immigration department will say, look, you've worked enough hours of the week. So you've essentially, you've definitely done the five days a week, which means we'll claim you the whole seven days. And you, you don't necessarily need to track it as closely. If, again, your hours are a little bit variable or they're falling below that sort of 36 hour mark, um, then it's really good to have this log so that even a shorter day you can claim and again get your, your visa extension or apply for that visa extension sooner. So it's pretty simple how all of that works. Um, at the bottom here, you'll get the total number of hours worked for the week. So here we've got a 36 hour total. Um, and just below that table as well is the total number of hours cumulative over the weeks that you actually worked. So right now, this is just, we imagine week number one. Um, I'll actually, what I'll do is I'll give you a little example as to how that works. So week one, I'm just gonna do this very quickly. Week one, let's just imagine now, I've done 12 hours. So I've gone down to this um, tab of week one. I've entered in 12 hours for the week. 12 hours total, and I'm claiming two days total over the course of this employment. Uh, week two, let's just say the same thing happens. Another 12 hours. So it's adding up the previous week and showing me that over the course of two weeks, I've now worked a total of 24, which means I can claim a total of four calendar days. Okay, so that's what this document will do for you is as every week passes by, you'll both get to um, showcase how many days you're claiming each week, and then also the total cumulative hours and days that you're claiming each week. So it should be a nice way to keep track of where you're at, how much you've got to go. We'll go back to the demo now. Oh, we'll go, let me just really fix that one up. Okay. So the reason why we entered in your name a bit earlier as well is just to save you some time. So your name, um, once you fill it out in this section here, in the A5 slide, will automatically be placed on every sheet where it needs to be. Um, and just below where your name is, you'll actually, that's where you're gonna sign and date 
that time that you sign it. And then below that again, this is where you'll have the employer name, um, the company name, and then also get the employer to sign and date it. So really important you do that. We've actually, and I think we've done it on the demo side, so I'll fix this up for the next few weeks as well. We've created a little drop down for the employer name as well, so that way you don't have to keep filling that out every single time. So let's just say it's employer one, and same thing with the company name, because if you work with different employers or different companies, um, you want to make it just easy for you to use the same sheet and document. Again, let's go company one, and that should make it a little bit faster. Um, so if you're wanting to add someone's name, or add a company name, I'll show you how to do that. You're gonna go all the way to the far end of the document. There's a sheet that I might even move that. You know what, let's move that over to drop downs. Okay, move that here. So just before we were on demo, drop downs. So this is where um, the information is being grabbed from for this drop down section here. So let's just say um, I have a new employer, uh, employer name, let's go Harry. Oh my God, I can't spell my name. And then the company name, okay. And just inputting that information in those two different columns in the drop down tab just here and down here should show up. Awesome. So now I'm gonna add in the employer name and the company name way tree and i'll set that up for all the different weeks as well so i don't think it's done at the moment no but just imagine that that'll actually be set up cool for all the different weeks along here so i'll do that at the end of this video so again the important thing is you're filling out all this information your um i'm gonna get back to the demo slide the days that you're placing down here and the start and end times, I'm um, sorry, like, sorry, let me start again. So the period start and the period end date of the week, really important that that and the total number of hours that you're saying that you work this week matches up with your pay slips. Then at the end of this uh, week, what I'd want to do is I would want to print this off, print it off into for portrait. So I would then want to print off this document like so, have the employer actually hand sign that one, add in the date there, and then that will be attached um, to the pay slips that I send in for when I'm trying to extend my visa. Cool, I think that's the major overview of it and uh, of how it works. There's one other thing that I don't think I touched on, which is how this, this um, day's been claimed works. So basically, if I've only worked four days, okay, then the day's work being claimed will be four. But if I actually work five days or more, if I work five unique days or more, then it'll actually count for the full week, okay? So this is assuming that the employer is happy that even if you work for an hour or two hours, they're happy that that counts for the day you know, for the fact that some of these jobs are variable. Hopefully that all made sense. Wasn't too confusing. Um, feel free to let me know yeah, if anything didn't make sense. As I said, you can either send me an email um, or yeah, just get in touch on us on Facebook, anywhere else as well.